The Principle of Hope by Ernst Bloch, Volume 1, Chapter 8, The Sign That Changes. It is a flat feeling to be disturbed, but we let ourselves be interrupted by new things remarkably easily, by unexpected things, as if no part of life were so good that it could not be abandoned at any time. Pleasure in being different abducts us. It often deceives us but it always drives us out of what we are used to. Something new must come to take us with it. Most are attracted merely by the empty difference from what has previously been, by freshness, regardless for the moment what its contents are. Here it already brings enjoyment that something is happening, only it must not contain any misfortune for ourselves. In the lowest instance, gossip seduces us, news of other people's quarrels, but even the newspaper lives largely from the need for the unusual. The latest news is its appeal. Nothing is therefore more inter more sorry. Nothing is therefore more uninteresting, and so undeservedly so, than a paper that is one or even several days old. Today's paper is overrated. Yesterday's underrated. The sting of surprise has been pulled out. All these vulgar or mediocre needs presuppose boredom which is to be driven out, but at the same time set something higher in motion. This something ultimately moves towards a wished-for, liberating piece of news. Its contents are definitely not uninteresting, but they make what is new into what is expected. Finally attained, achieved. The new is greeted as a brother who has travelled from the region where the sun rises. The sensational wish is immalleable, dull souls itself, dull and gullible, and strong souls capable of vision, it is thorough. It wants to make sure that man is not lying crooked, that he is in tune with his place and his work, that this work does not fob him off with alms, but rather that the same old story of doing without finally comes to an end. The story of doing without finally comes to an end. We listen in that direction, strain to see. The will which is at work here stems from deprivation and does not disappear until the deprivation is eradicated. Thus, as children, we jumped up, not always in fear, when the bell rang outside. Its ringing cuts through the silent, gloomy room, especially towards evening. Perhaps now something darkly intended is coming, that which we are looking for, that which is looking for us again. Its gift transforms and improves everything. It brings a new age. The ringing of this bell remains in every ear. It is associated with every good cry from outside. With the great awakening that is there and is coming, of course expectation alone does not bring it. But if it is well attuned to the sound and what it means, the expectation does not let us ignore the sound. It will not be deceived in the long run, because the lie does not last. Any more than the more refined, that is, the almost more cunning lie, which whines and slanders pharisaically, can deceive us in the long run, because the socialist new is brought about by powers and not by gossip, by the hard work of proving ourselves, and not through backsliding excuses. The obsession with what is better remains, even when what is better has been prevented for so long. When what is wished for arrives, it surprises us anyway.